I see dead people. Welcome to Spiritual Realities Podcast with your host, Dana Emanuel. Have you ever fallen prey to the most successful and cunning card artist ever to live? Ever become fascinated by the paranormal or become involved in the new age, witchcraft, or the occult? Come listen to the testimonials of people who have discovered the deceptions behind these things, have since come out of it all, and have been set free by Jesus. Welcome, everyone, to Spiritual Realities Podcast. I'm Dana Emanuel, the host, and tonight I have a very special guest on with me. Uh, She has a very powerful testimony. She was a fourth-generation spiritist medium from Brazil in the Obanda religion, and her name is Ivani Grape. She is also a book author and released her book called Cast Out. Chronicles of a Familiar Spirit. I'm going to go ahead and let Ivani introduce herself. Hi, Ivani. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Thank you so much for having me on your podcast. And congratulations. I'm very happy that you're doing this because you're very gifted and anointed. So I, I pray that God will continue using you in your ministry. Well, thank you so much, Ivani. I really appreciate that. Thank you. Um, Ivani is actually from Brazil, Ivani? Yeah, I was born in Sao Paulo. Yes. Ivani actually lives in the sunny state of Florida, where I live. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Almost neighbor. We've actually got to meet each other in person before. Yeah. You know, she's a very sweet person. She's a very humble lady, a woman of God. And um I want her to tell her testimony tonight and and let people hear it. It's very powerful and how she actually came to the Lord. It's very interesting. And I think you guys will love to hear it. Um, Ivani, I'm going to go ahead and let you just start, um, you know, talking a little bit about Umbanda and, you know, that way people understand what it is and, and, you know, a little bit about the, you know, your, your family and lineage. Mm-hmm. Sure. Thank you again, Dana. Uh, praise God for this. I was born in Brazil, as Dana said, and uh, my entire family, for we can go back as four generations, were all practicing spiritism, which for those that are not familiar with that term, spiritism was founded uh, by Alain Kardec in France in the 1800s and brought to Brazil in the late 1800s. It was also, it spread throughout, uh, from Europe, throughout the world. It came to the United States. It was very popular during the uh, late 1800s through the 19, early 1900s here in the United States as well. And just to give an overall picture of what spiritism is, it's just sort of the seance type of um, practice where people would sit in tables and they would receive messages from supposedly spirits of the dead, which as Dana will testify and anyone that's come out of these deceptive uh, faiths and practices, we cannot contact the dead. It, Amen. It, these are spirits, but they're demonic spirits that mimic the dead. So they can come in any shape and form. The Bible says even Satan comes as an angel of light. So demonic spirits will transform into whatever will suit them to deceive people. And it's very uh, dangerous, as we all know. So my family... My, my great-grandparents were mediums that uh, will use the term channel these spirits uh, in their spirit guides to practice healings, um, to bring messages from the dead. Uh, they were uh, called seers, which could see into the spirit realm. And again, 
these spirits that you see manifesting as somebody's grandmother or mother or sister, these are all demonic spirits that they change their parents because they can manifest as anything. So my great grandparents were spiritist mediums and they were healers on my mother's side. Uh, they came from Spain to Brazil and they already brought this belief system with them. So my grandmother, my maternal grandmother was also a medium. My maternal grandfather was a medium as well. Now the rest of the family, most of the people just practiced the faith. They, my mother never became a medium, but she, it was our belief system. And I'll get into that a little bit more. But on my father's side, the Italian side of the family, his paternal uh, grandmother was also a healer. She was from Sicily. And, you know, here they're considered called strega, which are considered white magic, and they do healing and things like that. And she was very successful at, at doing these healings. Again, I always make a point of saying that people that practice these things, even today, a lot of people, and I believe the majority of people do not do this to harm other people. They believe it's a good thing. They believe that they're helping people. And that's where the deception comes in. And that's where my testimony uh, was a struggle to get to the point of being set free because it was so hard to believe that these things were evil. And yes. until Jesus Christ showed us because that's the only one that can set us free is Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. But uh, going back to my family, so I was born in Brazil and as early as I can remember, Dana, I was seeing into the spirit realm. Mm -hmm. So uh, as a little girl, uh, as early as four or five, I can remember seeing spirits all the time. They were mostly the dark shadowy figures that we mm -hmm. called uh, vultos in Brazil. Here they're, they're known as shadow people. Have you heard of that? Yes. Term? So. Yes. Because they are, they look like shadow, but they're, they're humanoid forms. So they roam around and you see them. So as a little child, I would see these things coming in and out through, through doors, to walls, following me everywhere. Even if I was playing outside, if I was in school. So I was terrified my entire life up until I was set free. I was 38 years old when I came to Christ. So in my entire life for 38 years, I saw these spirits, roaming spirits, mm. which for my family was because of our background, because what we believed was considered a gift from God. And because I was so young, they explained that these spirits weren't trying to harm me. They were like, I was like a magnet because they would be able to communicate through me, but I was too young to understand, obviously. And yeah. I was too young to be able to be what they call um, developed as a medium. But it would come a time where I would have to be prepared as a medium in order to receive these spirits, the messages, and help others. So it was all done in, believe, in the deception that it was a good thing and it was from God. But as a little child, you can imagine. Uh, you have grandchildren, Dana, I do too, and I, I just look at them now and I think, oh, dear Lord, for, for these poor things to go through, I, I, I just thank God every day that they don't have to, to experience this because it was terrifying because I always felt like there was something hovering and it was always evil. As a child, I knew it was evil. I knew yeah. it was bad. And I felt that darkness and that it was always threatening. So, but my family kept reassuring me and my mom with all good intentions and love for me would take me to the spiritist center that my, my family attended. And it was just to give an idea for the audience to picture this, it would be in someone's home. The main medium would sit at a table at the head of the table and there'll be several chairs with other mediums, which included my family because my, like I said, my great grandmother and my grandmother were mediums. And other, the guests or the congregation, maybe you can call it that, would sit around or stand against the walls and wait for the spirits to manifest through these people. They would become possessed by these spirits 
which they were, we didn't call that possession. We called that receiving these spirits, like a seance type of thing. And like, and like here, sorry to interrupt, but like no, in here, in here they mm -hmm. call it channeling, correct? Is that like the same yes, thing? Yes, channeling, exactly. Okay. It is yeah. exactly the same thing. That's what we called it as well. We, it's, well, channeling, receiving these spirits. Yes. So yes. they would become possessed by these spirits that uh, would, so basically everybody that was there visiting or at, in the audience, they would come forward to one of the mediums and receive healing. They would all receive a word or received a sort of a, a remedy for ailments. For example, if a kid had intestinal worms or it's in Brazil, it's very, very common. Instead of going to the pharmacist, you go to the spirit to see, meet him and they'll say, take this tea and take that. And it worked, you know, because a lot of the natural things work, but it was also done through demonic persuasion. And it was not, it, it, it opened up doors for these people without them realizing that they were becoming entrenched in this belief system that was taking them away from God. And we... Interesting, Dana, that during these meetings, uh, people talked about Jesus Christ, the mediums. There were some scripture that was read in God. Wow. However, the Bible that we uh, read or that the that we believe we didn't believe in the Bible of the Christ the Christian Bible, which is the true word of God. We believed in scripture through Ellen Kardec's book that's called, uh, that was our Bible, it's called, well, I'm sorry, uh, The Gospel According to uh, Spiritism. I'm going to get a little off topic, but I need to, to mention this to you right now. because yeah. So this um, Ellen Kardec is huge. Uh, it's called uh, Kardecism. It's K-A-R-D-E-C-I-S-M if anybody wants to look Ooh. it up. And it's through the Spiritist Foundation of Brazil. And it's huge here in the United States oh. because it's considered uh, healing. So it connects with that Reiki type of thing, all the new age, you know, oh, wow. they, they use energy healing. Yes. I was going to ask you if the healing was similar to Reiki here. Yes, very, very much because what they do is the spirits, the energy of these spirits through the medium heals. And it's, uh, or they send a message or they, they prescribe a, a remedy with tea or they'll say, you need to light a candle for the spirit that's following you because the spirit, uh, they, they don't know they have died yet. They need to follow the light. So you need to pray for their, for them to, for the, uh, another spirit of light to come and take them over to the other side and, and so forth. Mm -hmm. You know, it's the, the new age uh, belief system with spiritism, with um, the same thing as uh, people that believe in um, the other uh, belief system, Buddhism, and, you know, they believe in reincarnation. We believed in reincarnation. That was 100%. We did not believe in heaven or hell. We didn't believe in demons. We believed that there were light spirits and dark spirits. And, right. and then it was a choice of the spirit to remain in darkness. They, so there's no, God has no part in any of this system. So that's what is very dangerous about it. So that's yeah. what I believed in. And that's what I was brought up in. And um, until... I was nine years old. I lived in Brazil and followed this, you know, my mother would do um, herbal baths to do the cleansing. We would do the the cleansing of the incense to cleanse the house of bad spirits, lighting candles and so forth, which a lot of other practices do the same here, as you know, Dana. Yes. yes. Um, so... I came to the United States at nine years old and I continued, it didn't, nothing changed. I continued to see spirits. I continued to, to be oppressed and, and always uh, crying out in the middle of the night, scared, crying for my mother. Mm -hmm. you know, I couldn't be anywhere by myself. And, sure. So, I just want to ask a question. Mm -hmm. um, you know, <clears throat> in, in, in any religion, mm -hmm. uh, there's always a, a negative 
Mm -hmm. like as far as negative energy or a bad spirit or whatever mm -hmm. how in that religion how did your parents try to stop negative activity were there any protection techniques done mm -hmm. and if so what did they seem to work well it was always temporary because i was always struggling mm -hmm. it never went away completely and it was what i you know mentioned the herbal baths there were teams, oh okay the the saging you know with the okay the, uh, beads uh, putting herbs behind your ear, under your pillow at night. Yeah. Uh, and there were, we, we, we didn't say prayers per se, but there were called uh, benedictions. Uh, my grandmother would bless me. Yeah. And uh, call on her spirit guide to, you know, and you would do things like put a glass of water out during the night and the mm -hmm. fluids inside that water you would drink it in the morning before eating or drink so all these things were cleansing things and and then you would light candles if these spirits were dark spirits that were following me to help them you know find mm -hmm. the light the, those were all the rituals but they never worked i mean because in in the in the lie that was told by the you know mediums and their spirit guides was well she has a gift but she's too little and she can't handle it so we need to just uh, for her to understand that it's going to get better and she's going to be able to control these spirits and she's going to be a, a very powerful medium when she becomes a teenager you couldn't become possessed or uh, channel any spirits until you're a teenager and you yeah. had to go through kind of like classes and pre preparation and so forth so uh, here in the United States, I lived for five years going through this all the time. And my mother, we, we lived in Massachusetts, and uh, we had some family members that were Portuguese that didn't know anything about this stuff, and they were Catholic, very staunch Catholics. And we weren't allowed to even mention these things because once my grandmother, who knew, you know, she grew, she was a teenager when she went to Brazil, she said, don't talk about these things here because people don't understand. They're going to think you're crazy. Don't don't discuss about any of this. And back then, there weren't any, uh, especially where I lived in Massachusetts, it was a very small town. So it was mostly, mostly Catholic. And mm -hmm. you didn't talk about any of this stuff. But now, so just kind of going off a little bit, going back to talking about cardicism, how we talked about the healing, the Reiki and everything, and the Spiritist Foundation, it's here. And you can look up the, um, they have every state in the United States has a headquarter, you know, they're um, a, a sh an offshoot of this where you can become a member. For example, if you if you go to Orlando, even yeah. here in Jacksonville, they have a spiritist center that's Cardis, from Cardicism. They teach children. They teach oh, wow. a lot of Americans are going for this because they're looking for alternative me medicine. Yeah. And it falls into that, you know, alternative medicine with the Reiki and everything. And they train this organization that started in Brazil and it's very big here in the United States. The conference is going to be in. I can't remember. I have it here, but I'll, I'll let you know. It's going to be here and then um, every year they have a conference, huge conference, and they um, they teach nurses. They teach, you know, there are a lot of chiropractors that practice. Mm -hmm. So, what, what before we get too too much, and I'm, I know I'm going off from my testimony. I apologize, Dana, but I feel my heart to let people know. Please be careful when you go to get a massage. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, in these places that are very, uh, they have, you know, the, the statues of the Buddhas and the sage and all that, uh, it, even though if it's just for a massage, a relaxing massage, or because they're going to be practicing Reiki over you, they're going to be hospitals, I'm a nurse, and I remember many years ago, I was, and I, I didn't even know how to react, and this was, I was new in my faith, now I, I would be a different situation, but I was so flabbergasted to see some nurses come in and they weren't from the hospital, but they were actual uh, friends of the family to pr practice Reiki over the patient before they went to surgery. And um, so this, 
uh, what I'm the meeting that's going to happen. That's uh, the cardicism is going to yeah. be on September 30th in Portland, Oregon, and it's yeah. called the set. It's the U.S. Spiritist uh, Symposium, and it's the 17th. So they've been doing this. It's not recognized. Yeah. Because, you know, as we were talking earlier, Dana, yeah. it doesn't matter what the practice is. Anything that goes away from from our Lord and Christ, our Savior Jesus Christ, and his word and his That's teaching, right. it doesn't matter what, what, what it's called. It's demonic. Yes. Yeah. You know, I was shocked <clears throat> as we were talking, too, about how the Umbanda is syncretized with like Catholicism. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I noticed that many religions are mixed and overlap with other religions, mm -hmm. but the main religion that we know cannot be syncretized with any other religion mm -hmm. is Christianity. Mm -hmm. Because Christianity, mm -hmm. true, true Christianity only That's has right. one truth That's and cannot it. be compromised in any way. If it's changed, mm -hmm. it's no longer Christianity. Exactly. Um, you know, what what you're saying about the it's interesting because it's not just Umbanda that's syncretized with Catholicism. Mm. It's also voodoo. So, and I'm going to explain why as we get to yeah. the Umbanda part. I'm going to explain why and how that happened. It's, yeah. it's, it's really like throughout. I, I and I practiced this for many years. I had no idea. Mm. You know, as a teenager, but so we as as I mentioned earlier. We started off as spiritist mediums of the Kardec uh, faith system, and until um, I, I lived here in the United States until I was fourteen, and I, I went back to Brazil with my sister and my two cousins who lived in Massachusetts with us. I was the oldest. I was fourteen, and I was ready for my indoctrination. So my parents sent me back to live with my grandparents. And they were going to come back and live in Brazil because my mom didn't accept living here in the United States and being away from the family. And my mom and dad had an uh, understanding that they would stay here for a few years and then go back because my mom was very close to her family. She did not want to stay in the United States indefinitely. So my father loved America. He didn't want to go back, but that was the deal they made. So they sent us ahead because we were losing our, our Portuguese language, you know, our, that's our mother tongue, and they wanted us to go back to school and so forth. So I went back to Brazil when I was 14. And immediately, as soon as I arrived in Brazil, uh, of course, I was seeing spirits all the time, like I said. But while watching TV with my family one day, uh, there were two incidents in my, my life that I saw a completely materialized spirit that looked completely human, and I couldn't differentiate. I was little before I came to America. I was at my uh, great grandmother's house, and I saw a um, a man come in. When I thought it was a man, and that's in my testimony book. And then we we'll, we can give the links if anybody wants to download the whole testimony and read it. We're not going to get into all the details because it's too long. But uh, I saw this man come in to my grandmother's house. There was a gate in Brazil. We had gates. We had walls, and he opened the gate that was locked and walked right in. The dogs didn't bark, and I was little. And while this was happening, I was paralyzed. A lot of people know, and you know very yes. well, about the um, uh, sleep paralysis. Yes. And I experienced that all my life. Again, up until I was 38, I was, had severe sleep paralysis. However, mm -hmm. twice in my life when I saw these spirits that were very human-like, not just the humanoid forms, I was completely paralyzed. And I was oh. awake. It was not sleeping. So I was experiencing the sleep paralysis, the same symptoms while being awake. It was terrifying, Dana, especially as a little girl. Yes. Because I could, I, I could see and I, I could hear, you know, the steps and, and I, couldn't, I couldn't scream and I couldn't move until after the thing disappeared and I was able to scream out. So um, it happened twice. Mm -hmm. Have you ever heard of the Oz Factor? The what? It's called the Oz Factor. No. It's, it's, a, um, it's a term that was coined by a ufologist uh, and author named Jenny Randalls. Mm -hmm. And it refers to the experience of being isolated 
or a lot of times people will like when they ex have an experience and they see another spirit, mm -hmm. they become frozen. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'm hearing this more. I'm, I heard about this from uh, Joseph Jordan. He's mm -hmm. the one that, you know, he wrote that book. Uh, Here's in the cosmic veil. You shall not be afraid. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night. But um, anyway, he's a, he's a, um, you know, he talks about UFOs and the, and the truth behind them and mm -hmm. how, um, you know, he's got hundreds of testimonies. I mean, at least hundreds of testimonies of people that when they um, called on the name of Jesus in mm -hmm. the middle of a UFO experience that the, it stopped. You know, the activity stopped and everything, you know, just went away. And, you know, he put things together and everything, but it made a believer out of him wow. you know, because he got into the, the research and everything. But very interesting. Mm -hmm. um, he lives right here in Florida now. But um, but anyway, uh, just it, it's just a, you ought to look that up, though, the, yeah. the loss factor, because when you brought this up, I was actually listening to one of your videos and you brought it up and I'm like, what? Mm -hmm. Are you kidding me? She mm -hmm. even experienced that. Yeah. But, um, very interesting. I, I don't mean to interrupt. I'm sorry. No, I, I love to bring that up because I was like, I wonder if she's heard of that because it is mm -hmm. something interesting to know about, you know? And, and I, I like the back and forth too, Dana, because it's like you, yeah. you add so much more, you know, because yeah. um, I've, I've heard of, uh, I definitely heard from my pastor who I thought, you know, when he, when I first heard, again, being very new in, in Christ, I thought, that's weird. Because he, he would say UFOs and uh, the uh, aliens, they're all demons. I'm like, what? Yeah, I didn't because know that. Even in the beginning of my walk with Christ, I thought, <laughs> yeah. and, I, and I thought, everything's demonic, and it is. Yeah. It's demonic. I'm and learning, then, uh, but the thing about it is, too, call on the name of Jesus, and guess what? It's, it's gone. gone. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah. 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 I don't know. Yeah. It doesn't matter if it's UFO. It doesn't matter if it's yeah, Bigfoot or Umbanda or if it's Reiki or it, yeah. You know, tarot card, it's all demonic. He always has some kind of deception tailored for everybody. Sometimes. Oh, and, and even not uh, people not believing in him, that's that's a, that's a strategy. Yes, you're right. You're yes. right. Or believe, or they don't believe in heaven or hell. Right? That's how we were. We did not. And, yep. you know, it's like uh, in John 8, 44, when he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own resources, for he is a liar and the father of it. Father of it. Yes. Okay. Amen. And people think, well, I can never be deceived. Well, the Bible says in the in the in Revelation where it says that the devil is going to be cast into into the lake of fire. And it said uh, the one that deceived the whole world, not mm -hmm. just not just parts of it. But everybody at some point has been deceived. And, and that's why I that's why I really try to tell people too is like don't don't be embarrassed because we've been deceived. I mean, we're still always going to be deceived at some point. Yeah. And we're always learning. So, mm -hmm. you know, there's still things to this day that I'm finding out that I've been deceived, you know. Mm -hmm. But it's just um the best thing to do though is to be accepting of it. Be humble <laughs> because yeah. I tell you what, pride can really get in the way of true wisdom and learning and mm -hmm. and um and stuff. Pride comes before the fall. If you're not teachable, you won't learn. No. So, no. I mean it's best to let that let that mm -hmm. down and just you know be humble and just say, you know what? Hey, mm -hmm. I was wrong. I would rather admit I'm wrong. God forbid, you know, <laughs> you know, where we if we knew everything. We we wouldn't need God. Obviously, we wouldn't be here. God left a lot of mysteries. Yes, He us. did. And and it's not for us. You know, we, all we need to trust Him. And, and um, I'm so sorry. We've really take up some time there without you being. Able to... we, we oh yeah, when you seen him. that man, that's where where we I went off. No, that's <laughs> and I think it's all everything. You know, we, we pray, Dana, and I let yeah. the Holy Spirit lead us. And yes, you know, exactly. You're right. You're right. Because, that's good. Um, you know, again, like uh, 
at the end we'll give my uh, website and people can just go and download yes. and read the, the testimony but yes. um, going back to um, when I was 14 I went back yes. to Brazil and that's when I was ready to be indoctrinated and that's when I saw for the second time another uh, spirit fully formed even though it was bluish and transparent but I could see all the features so weird, so weird. And I was 14 and we were watching TV in my uh, my grandmother's living room and I screamed. I, I was paralyzed again for a long time. And as soon as that thing broke and the this spirit walked away and I broke free, I was screaming because it was terrifying. Here I am, and I got in trouble because my grandmother said, I saw it too, you know, and she was, a medium for since she was a young girl as well and she she was so angry with me she said i saw do you know that was my grandfather you know and she mm. said you need to this, you need to go ever since you were little you, you know you've had this gift and it's time for you to go and develop your gift you need mm. to be a medium you need to help other people instead of screaming and being scared you're, you're too old for this now you're not a little girl anymore Oh, wow. and I was devastated, you know, that part, because I was going to bring that up to you. And because, you know, how I've done videos about children in the paranormal mm -hmm. and boy, my heart, and I'm sure yours is too, mm -hmm. heart is heavy for children affected by the paranormal. It's so sad. And then there's parents that with no bad intentions at all. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, like we talked about, nobody's perfect. We've all been in deception. Mm -hmm. And most of the time, the deception does affect our children mm -hmm. and everything. And um, it did affect you. And when your grandmother had, you know, told you that, and she said, you know, mm -hmm. you know, just thinking of you being afraid. And I seen that picture of you mm -hmm. and the stuff you went through. And I mean, really, it brought tears to my eyes. Yeah. I was, you I was, can I was, see, yeah. like, I always had that expression of, as a little yeah. girl, I was never... And my sister was always happy and jumping. And oh. I always had this terrified look in my face because I always saw these mm -hmm. things around me. Yeah. But, but as far as Umbanda, Dana, uh, we practiced spiritism up until I was 14. When I was 14 is when I got into the Umbanda. Oh, okay. A little bit different from what we were talking about. Remember, we talked about what seance okay. like, with yes. healing with the, uh, around the table. Yes. Umbanda is a totally different thing. So when I was 14, I went to the Umbanda temple with my aunts for the first time because they were practicing that. Yeah. And I fell in love with the religion immediately because, first of all, it's um, just I'm going to give you a quick overview. But it, yeah. uh, you go into this, it's called the temple, but it's um, an area that has a big uh, altar that faces just like a church that would face the uh, audience. No one's allowed to go into the part that's called the tejero. It's like the yard, you know, yeah. and, uh, but it's inside the building, obviously. So people have a little fence and they sit back behind the, this is the congregation that comes to receive healing or, or energy passes or uh, advice, whatever from the mediums that are there from the Umbanda mediums. So I'm just giving a picture. So uh, there's drums, people wear white, people wear beads. They're, the altar is filled with uh, images, which includes Christians, uh, Catholic saints, candles, flowers. And then you have the Yoruba Ifa saints. And I'm going to explain that. I, I know it gets a little confusing, but Yes. The spiritism, which is the Alan Kardec spiritism, and Ifa, uh, Yoruba religion, which is an off, uh, Umbanda is an offshoot of Ifa, I F A. And I'm going to explain that real quick. So there's music playing, there's drums playing, there's incense, and there's dancing. So it's very, it's beautiful to look at, and it's very ethnic. It's African, it comes from Africa. And it's, yeah combined to the Brazilian, you know, Brazilians, we, we have most of our culture is African anyways. And why is it? Because of the slave trade. We had many, many slaves that came to Brazil during the Portuguese colonialism. Uh, the, you know, we, we belong to 
like just like England, America belonged to England, Brazil belonged to Portugal. Oh, and okay. Just like America, uh, Eng the English and America brought slaves to work, cotton fields here and other fields. Brazil brought slaves, the Portuguese, to Brazil to work the coffee fields and sugarcane plantations and so forth. Same, yeah, same thing in Cuba. The slaves were brought there. Same thing in um, all these other countries, uh, Puerto Rico, all these other Latin American countries that practice these similar relig religions because it all came from the slave trade. So I, I started practicing Umbanda, which is, I described briefly, and the worshiping. So what is Umbanda is, um, first of all, let me explain what Ifa is. And yes. then Ifa is the, the, the base of Umbanda. Ifa mm -hmm. comes from Africa through the slave trade that came to Brazil. Mm -hmm. And Umbanda is specifically from Brazil. So in Ifa, they worship the, they have a supreme creator of heaven and earth. Then they have the Orisha spirits that make up elements of every living thing. So these spirits, they're beautiful goddess and gods, little Gs that represent rivers, they represent thunder and lightning, they represent um, the, the forest, and each one is syncretized with the saint of the Catholic faith. So you mentioned Mary, why do we worship Mary? Mary is syncretized with Yemanja, which was my head spirit guide, supposedly, that we know are demons, but at that time, and that's the, the queen of the sea, which is, it, this is thousands of years back in Africa, okay? And it's part of this religion, Umbanda in Brazil, that was combined with Catholicism. Why do they use the Catholic saints to represent their gods? Because when the slaves, uh, they were forced to become Catholics by the slave masters. Oh. They were not allowed to practice Ifa, but they never let it die. What they would do is when they were told to bow down to the saints at the altar in the Catholic faith, they would bury their own gods on the dirt you know, in, the, in, the, in the coffee fields and they would bow down and actually they were bowing down to their gods. But then they syncretized, they would say, okay, Mary represents Yamanja. Um, St. George represents Ogun, which is the god of lightning and thunder. Uh, so I'm not going to get into all of them because there's so many. Again, you can read about it in that little booklet. So that's what Umbanda is. It's uh, a combination of these religions and what happens in Umbanda. The mediums become possessed by what they believe to be their spirit guides. For example, I was, my spirit guide was supposed to be a manjal the, from the sea. So I would become possessed by a lineage of that spirit. And, and there was no talking, it was only dancing, sometimes singing, and they, everybody that was there, all the mediums, there could be like 30, 40, 50 that would dance and worship. And there were, uh, just like in church, there would be a song dedicated to each lineage of the spirit guides. And after that, the people that were in the congregation would come in to the little gates and be assigned to one medium at a, you know, uh, that was across the room. And then they would get their consultation, a spiritual consultation, which would, they would receive the healing passes, which is again, going back to Reiki, the energy passes from the spirit guide. They would, um, they would have uh, people come with spiritual issues, health issues, uh, relational issues, and they would get advice from these spirits. And like we mentioned earlier, there would be uh, prescriptions of teas or uh, different things like that. Um, 
so again, I'm not going to get into too much detail, but just to yeah. to kind of put all this Umbanda thing into perspective, again, remember Ifa is the, the like I mentioned, if it's a tree, the Ifa is the trunk. Where okay. all all the belief system from thousands of years ago from the Yoruba people, West African people, were, you know, the diaspora of the um, slave trade went throughout the world, throughout the Americas, throughout the Caribbean. They brought with them the Ifa faith, the belief in these gods. Uh -huh. And so it's the same thing. If you go to Cuba, with the uh, or, or or other uh, religions that are Caribbean, and and they practice Santeria, for example, they worship the same gods that we worship in Umbanda. Oh, if you okay. go to Haiti or even Louisiana, where they they practice Voodoo, mm. it's they they worship the same. It's if it comes from Ifa. Umbanda is the only one. That, is it the only one? that does not do the sacrifices of animals. Right, Umbanda, they don't sacrifice uh, animals. Okay. Even though there, there's so many different like levels. It's like, you, you know, you go to a Baptist church here and each Baptist church may have a little different ritual that they may do, even though they do the same things over. They're not supposed to do animal sacrifices. There are some Umbanda temples that rarely they do if they want to heal somebody or break curse, you know, because there are a lot of curses that are put upon other people. But the yeah. other, in Brazil, you have, like you said, three. You have Umbanda, you have Kimbanda, and you have Candomblé. And uh, Umbanda, Kimbanda and Candomblé, they do, they do sacrifice animals, yeah. And you see that in Brazil in the streets all the time, in the cross crossroads. You, you walk and you see candles and you see a bottle of... Uh, Cachaça, which is Brazilian sugarcane, uh, like moonshine, candles, and yeah. a dead chicken. Sometimes oh. they have dead puppies. They'll, they'll sacrifice oh, wow. this blood. So it's the, And you don't touch it. You walk around it. And, and they put it right in the middle of the crossroads. Mm, but it requires but it, blood. It does. It requ yes. It, That's it, interesting, it, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Well, the enemy, you know, want a lot of religions like that, or like in in Satanism and mm -hmm. and everything, how they want blood as as you know an offering or you know to their because, god. Because they're uh, Satan, he'll counterfeit everything from God. Yeah, like Jesus was our I, sacrifice for us. The our last, you know, blood sacrifice. That's, that's why there's no need for anymore. Yeah animal sacrifices like in the old testament yes but, but with satan no you know that they, they it, it, christ is completely discredited as our savior as god and in, the, in the, all these religions all these they recognize christ they recognize jesus christ but to us he was always a um, an elevated spirit he was never god he was the most elevated spirit to ever walk on earth. Would you mention to the listeners about how Ubanda mm -hmm. religion overlaps with the BLM movement? Yes, and I have um, also on my website, it's my name, Ivani Grappi. It's www.ivanigrappi.com. I have an article. I'm going to send it to you too, Dana. It, it, okay. It, and it's uh, just a couple of years ago, you know, when um, Black Lives Matters was all the fires and all the protesting after George Floyd was killed and all that craziness. Yeah. And I started reading, you know, the more I read and all of a sudden I, I started connecting the dots and I was like, this cannot be. And I found out by reading more and more and going into their website that the BLM leaders uh, the primary two leaders that I have in this article, Patrice Kohler, uh, uh, and I can't remember the other name, the other one's name, they practice IFA, which is the primary 
the trunk of that tree of these all these religions that come from the Ifa faith from the Africans that came to all over the world. Umbanda, Kanoble, um, Voodoo, and uh, even uh, Santeria. So they practiced the original religion, Ifa, and it was on their website. And what they said from their mouths was that the BLM movement, Black Lives Matter movement, was not a political movement. It was a spiritual movement. And just mm. not, you know, to get into too much detail. And that was, and when I re connected the dot that what they practice here, BLM, and then I found out through the rabbit hole, all these famous movies, um, um, famous singers, uh, including one of the biggest one would be um, that's more open about it, that dresses up as the, uh, these Orishas, they're called, they're, God, they're, they're gods from Ifa, is Beyonce. And she even talks about channeling these spirits, that um, album Lemonade is all about Ifa. It's all about channeling these spirits. Wow. And I was like, wow, the more I read about it. So, yes, so BLM, um, Beyonce, her husband, and many, many other artists, they all practice this Aoife faith. They all become possessed by these spirits. And that's yeah. through them. And that's like reading articles that they talk about it. And their songs that's talking about, because I know... Uh, you know, what the dressing looks like, what the beads look like, what the gestures and all that, because yep. I practiced it. And it's not, you know, I didn't practice Ifa, I practice a Umbanda that has Ifa in it. And I worship yeah. the Ifa gods. So that's what Black Lives Matters practice. And uh, just to, I know that we're going a little over here as far as our time, Dana, but yeah, uh, that's okay. What, I read on their website, and I don't think it's there any longer, but what they said, it's not a political movement, it's a spiritual movement. And mm. before every uh, every demonstration, before every protest, wow, we, we do not allow cameras to come and we uh, worship our, they, they do libations, you know, they, they pour alcohol on the ground and offering to the spirits to the spirit guys, to the Orishas, which that's what wow. they called. And they, they had so many people joining. Yes. And people have, they have no calling idea. Calling it a doing. movement mm -hmm. for what looked to, looked to be a good cause. I mean, it was very horrific. What yeah. happened to him? Of course, of course, Black Lives Matter. But yeah, what happened with this movement? It turned into, uh, yeah. ever since this happened, there's, there's so much, uh, race uh, and tensions, and, yeah. and and we know, <clears throat> you know, I, I I'm not considered white, you know, even though I have white skin, I'm not considered a white person here in the United States because I'm a yeah. Latino. But I I cannot say. Of course, there's always going to be all over the world, even in Brazil, everywhere. There's yes. going to be uh, uh, injustice and stuff. Injustice. Yeah, yeah, yes. right. Yep. But now it's like it, it it became like explosive when most people love each other. Most people have black friends or have Latino friends or you know. Well, yes. it's like most people don't on a one to one basis. We don't feel that way. But this is what yeah Satan wants. You know, it's he came to still kill and destroy. Cause this big division is yes. what it is. And, and uh, I mean, there was a, there were, it started with a division. It started with something that wasn't right. Exactly. But then it's like everybody started turning on each other, not realizing, whoa, wait a minute here. You know, the devil is using us. Oh my God. But listen <laughs> so his, to this. His plan. Plan. So when they do the ceremony, mm -hmm. right? And, and then this is from their mouths. After they do the ceremony, they do, they do saging, they do, uh, they offer flowers, they do offerings and things like that. They do a prayer for their Orisha gods, the Ifa gods. Again, the Ifa gods that I worshipped. And after that, when they, when they say 
to call the name of the, you know, call their names, call their name. I thought before I did, you know, I started reading and reading and reading and, and researching. I thought they were just honoring the dead, that person that died, they were honoring by calling their name. No, from their mouths, they said, we are calling on their spirit to join us. Mm -hmm. So wow. <laughs> we know that we you cannot call on the spirit of the dead. First of all, it's prohibited. Yeah. You know, the word of God That's says, right. you know, it, it's an abomination to God. Amen. Amen. And it's not, and it's not possible. It's people not possible. say, well, people say, well, if it was, if it wasn't possible, why would God prohibit it? Well, the reason he prohibits it is because it's not them that are responding. Exactly. That the exactly. enemy is pretending to be them. So of course, and, and a lot of people don't know that. That's mm -hmm. why God says, do not try to contact your dead relatives. Yeah. You know, necromancy is prohibited. Yeah. Just like you said, they're no longer here. And what happens, Dana? So what what happens with these protests? The world, you know, people. Yes. They start uh, they, fighting. You, you, know, and... you see the demonic activity happening because it's like yes, everything hate. is set on fire. Hate and, and violence, and and it just. Yeah. Yeah, just like the Bible says is going to happen, just like the days of Noah said, man became more violent mm -hmm. with more hatred and, you know, in their hearts and, and yeah. more violent. And that's what's happening now. We're seeing yeah. it all, you know, unfolding, mm -hmm. you know, in front of our eyes. I really, truly believe we're in the last days. I do, too. You I know, am. it's just yeah. how can it get any worse, really? Please you know? so, because yeah, it's, it's, yeah. Uh, and I, I, my, my heart breaks for the kids, for the younger generation, mm -hmm. and, uh, my grandkids. What are they, they going to go through? Oh. They, you know, we, we lived our, now we know what, how good we had it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And nowadays you have to, you, it's going to, it's even harder. Okay. To teach your children the Christian ways. Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. but we, it, but we have to do it even that much more, more just more. so they will be able to withstand yeah. in that day. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and today even, I mean, I've had my grandson come home and say, there's been a couple of times he come home one time and he's like, Mimi, he says, uh, when we were on the playground, these kids would come up and they were playing something called Charlie, Charlie. He said, and I told them that wasn't right. Mm -hmm. And I mean, he got away and told me. So I went out there, of course, the next day <laughs> and I got a hold of the teacher that was in charge and let her know what had been going on. Mm -hmm. Now it, it's demonic and it, it is real. Yeah. And um, then he come home again and told me about, um, you know, LGBT and how, his teacher, you know, was was gay and how she dressed in all rainbow stuff and how she was telling the kids how, you know, she wanted to make sure to dress that way. So the ones that were that way felt accepted and they did not feel left out. And, you know, mm -hmm. and all this stuff and how they had posters up at school with boy with boy, girl mm -hmm. with girl. And I'm like, what? And this and is that the public schools now. And you this know? is so politically incor incorrect, but I'm going to say it. Yeah. Th this transgender movement, uh, mm -hmm. attack on children, is demonic. Oh, it is so demonic. And I don't it's demonic. If you're an adult and you yeah. want to do this, go right ahead. You know, yeah. I don't agree with it. But you're That's an adult. Right. So you have free will, okay? Yeah, but I'm don't push it on our children. You, but do not leave the children out of it. And this right. target thing, it's, it's mm -hmm. no, Dana. It's so, it's like yeah. we, we're living, you said it, we're living. Yes. When, think back three years ago, yeah. all these things that are happening that we wouldn't, if somebody told us three years ago that we would be seeing uh, abortion up to birth that is yeah. applauded. Uh, all these things that are upside down and inside yes. out, and children being brought to, uh, you know, to uh, trans men, uh, uh, transgender shows, oh, and drag it, shows, it, right? It's like, how, uh, why would you bring yeah. a child to something pornographic? And back then, think about how things used to be in the closet, talking about that and mm -hmm. the occult. 
I mean, yes. back then you didn't dare mess with widget boards or, oh. or do anything, but you know what? It's in plain sight. But the reason it's in plain sight is because society has become that desensitized. Yes. It, you yes. know, because we're, we're living in scary times. You know, the these things used to be taboo and considered mm -hmm. evil. Now it's considered to be entertainment and exciting. Can and I say very, something um, that's I yes. find so oh, interesting? Oh, absolutely. Dana? Yes. Every, everything in the occult here in the United States, as opposed to other... I, I can tell you from my experience in Brazil, yes. uh, but all these other countries that practice the occult or any type of religion that's not Christianity, that's decept deceptive, especially anything to do with spiritism and contacting the dead and everything. It's a religion. It's a faith system, very serious faith system. Yes. And it's entertainment. Widget board is entertainment. Uh, all the artists, all the it, you, you get it from the music, you get it from all the more, all the Disney shows for the kids. All the occult comes through entertain, and the, and uh, I think that uh, a lot of the fall is that the church, churches really don't teach about these things, and you yeah. know as far as what the Bible teaches, and it's yeah. uh, it's again a lot of it was now I think people are taking it more seriously, but I think pastors, you know would kind of overlook it because it's like, ah, it's not real. It's not yes. true. And, you know, right. and again, like we, we talked about, you know, uh, C.S. Lewis, I was reading the quote, and it says, there are two equal and opposite errors into which our race can fall about the devils. One is to disbelief in their existence. The other is to believe and to feel an excessive and unhealthy interest in them. So both is bad. Yeah. You know? Yes. But, you know, it's in the Bible. They, That's Jesus right. Christ, you know, he delivered people from demonic possessions. So That's right. And, and even children, we might want to add that. Exactly. You know, because I, I, mean, I heard you talking about that on, um, it was it was either, it was either another podcast you was on, or maybe it was at the, uh, which I would conference. love to leave the link on that, the conference that you did. Yeah. That was a great presentation. Yeah. You did. Thank um, you. Tonight, I know we've talked a lot, but on there, you are you really straightforward, you know. Um, <laughs> but you gave a great presentation about the Ubanda and mm -hmm. and you know where it branched off from and everything. Mm -hmm. But I I will leave that link oh, on there, you know. Um, and, and, and your book, <laughs> and the oh, link in your you. book and your website, you know, I'll definitely put that stuff on there because people need to know. And that way they can see your your what you have, you know, mm -hmm. what you wrote and stuff too. Thank well, you. I'll, I'll send you the link to the Black Lives Matters. Um, yes, yes. Too. And that's yes, how definitely. I met, uh, I quoted uh, Don Vino and Joy Vino's uh, article on that because they wrote an yeah. excellent article, and I was like, "Wow, yes. they get it. They're talking about." So I quoted mm. them, and that's how I connected with Don Vino of the uh, MNR. EMNR conference awesome. and, and also his uh, ministry. But just to, to tie it out, wow. up, Dana, how did I become set free practicing this for many years? A pastor came from Brazil. He's a minister, uh, missionary from Brazil to Florida because by this time, you know, 30, uh, no, 20 something years later, uh, I was still immersed in this. I was 38 years old. I was still immersed in this belief system for 38 years. I had never read a Bible. I rejected yeah. Christianity. Of course, I knew Christians. I would not allow anybody to witness to me because I did not believe in the Bible at all. I didn't believe in Christianity. I thought it was a big lie. And um, But by this time, we're saturated with all these belief systems here. Like I mentioned in the beginning, uh, a lot of Brazilians, um, they brought, you know, so you can go anywhere here in Florida, anywhere in the United States, and you'll find these um, practices here, either spiritism or Umbanda or Canamblé or any any of these other mixes, you know, IFA, you know, there's uh, a big IFA movement here and but anyways, this this is another rabbit hole that I don't want to. I just want to tie it up with my how I was delivered. So this pastor yes. came to my my parents' uh, printing shop. My sister, uh, she's uh, she was managing at the time. Now she she runs uh, my my parents retired, and she 
it was at the counter this he walked in and she was going through a lot at the time my um my nephew was doing drugs just really intelligent super super intelligent kid just threw his whole life away 17 years old his girlfriend was pregnant my my sister was losing her mind and we didn't have any faith uh as far as in christ we just had spiritism and Linda, you know yeah so he walked in and introduced himself talked to her told her about christ he you know he perceived that she was going through a lot of pain and he prayed with her and she accepted christ right there immediately oh. right, right there and then and she calls me she's so sweet my sister and she called me crying to tell me how this big weight had been lifted off she never felt anything like that after the pastor prayed she felt like she was lifted up in the air and everything all it no matter nothing had changed but she knew That's that wonderful. god was gonna help her and instead of like being happy for my sister i was livid and i was so angry with her because i hated this guy without ever meeting him long story mm -hmm. short i eventually met him it took three times this pastor three different visits with this pastor trying to witness to me to christ and he knew exactly what i believed in because he's from brazil and he had a background in in the same belief system which is very common in brazil by the way oh you, you're gonna meet someone that's a christian well no no not christian uh catholic or you know or any other and they all believe in spiritism they all kind of practice that in some way or form it's a very accepted in Brazil's part of our culture. So yeah. he came and he, he told us flat out, this is demonic. You are possessed. And I was like, I, you, that even, I did not want to see him again. But again, <laughs> in my book, there's more details. But once I met him, things started happening. There was manifestation. I became possessed in front of my family, freaked everybody out. Not, I didn't mm. know what was happening. And God used this man powerfully. And I, I, until I finally, the third time around, I, I, I accepted him to come to my house to perform a deliverance. And we were talking about that. I would like to end with a little bit of that. Yes, um, absolutely. It's powerful. So, so he, he uh, it wasn't him, obviously, but through him, Christ delivered me from generations and generations of deception and i was set free it was powerful to the point that my sister was a witness there so she told me everything that happened but it took eight hours for me to finally be set free from these demons i had you know many demons that were possessed and and, and you were blacked out i was i it, it was yeah in and out of consciousness which is normal even when i was at the not normal, but calm. Exactly. It is for that, for, for yeah. actual possession. I you, think you a lose, lot of people get it mixed up. But when I heard your testimony, I'm like, no, she was possessed. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I, <laughs> absolutely. I heard, Dana, I'm a nurse, and it took me 21 years after I was delivered to have the courage to tell people about it because yeah. I, I, all I thought was like, people are going to think I'm crazy. I'm going to lose my, my nursing oh, wow. license. But then I thought, no, God did this for me and he'll do it for other people. He did it for my family. Amen. He set Amen. us free from the, and, I'll be, and God put in my heart, I need to tell people. It's not about me. It's about, yes. it's about what he did for us. That's and, right. And it's like, I don't deserve it. None of us do. Yes. But oh. praise God. And, and again, in a nutshell, I did have to go through deliverance. But yes. thank God, uh, very throughout my family everybody that practiced it nobody they accepted christ they, once you accept christ you're set free that's once, right so i unfortunately that didn't happen to me because i was free will i was still hanging on i was conflicted and i was possessed once yes. i was set free and i was thrown several feet backwards and i literally felt that explosion of these demons coming out of me there was a, mm. a big veil a black veil that was lifted from my 
I, since I was a little kid, I always saw everything in dark. Everything was dark. And this was this was while when he started when he started praying for you. You it threw you backwards. It, it just and, then, and it, this was like eight hours after the. the and was this started. when wasn't this the time that you actually hit your head? Yeah, and you couldn't I, understand I, 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 why there was no injury afterwards. No injury that's whatsoever. Praise and, God. And I just woke up uh, in literally the term born again. I was born again at that second at that. And when I, and that's when I accepted Christ as my, you know, has my life been perfect? No, but has it been joy? That, that, do I have the joy of the Lord? Yes. No matter what the circumstances. Amen. And, and it's like, uh, I, I just can't, like you said that Dana, every day I thank God. Yes. And I know you do yes. too. But yes. Have so much mercy. Mm-hmm. Yes. On me and my family, because we don't deserve any of this. Yes. And, but you have to take that step, you know, like they said when the when the um, Hebrew people were at the, De the Red Sea and they were there and they were being chased by the enemy. They didn't wait for the sea to part before they walked. They put their foot in the water. They trusted God. They had to. Yes. Yeah. That's true. And that's when it opened. If they were standing there waiting, you have that's to have right. that faith. You have to. And yes. That's and that's such, I'm so glad you said that because mm -hmm. I have someone that I've been trying to encourage about faith. Mm -hmm. And that's a good, very good analogy to, to, yeah. to cause it, well, it's scripture, yeah. you know, yeah. but it's very powerful. The word is very powerful. It I'm is. glad you said that. It's a sword. And it will, yes, it is. And, and I'm telling you one, I didn't believe in the Bible. But he read one. He read that verse, to die once and then judgment. And even yes. though I didn't believe, trust me, that was the first nick in that. It was. I felt it. It cut. It cut yes. something that. And that's what I. And it was the word of God that allowed. And you know, I have people come and, and a lot of times ask me, "I need deliverance. Can you deliver?" I do believe. There is a place and a time for deliverance. But like you said it, Dana, Jesus yes. Christ, deliver us. The word of God, deliver us. Do we need yes. deliverance ministries? Do we need deliverance people that know about deliverance? Yes, because there's so much evil. That's in the right. Way. But not everybody needs to, to go through this. Because once you believe right. and you give your life to Christ, you will be set free. Yep. And, um, and you know, like um, some people believe that they're possessed when actually they're being oppressed mm -hmm. and then and they're fighting temptation and they're just learning to crucify their own flesh, mm -hmm. you cannot cast out temptation. This was tempted, but he but he did not that's fall right to temptation. And it's not easy for us because we are the flesh is weak as the bible says but we have christ that's right do that for us and yes and and yes you're so right because people do get this confusing idea that mm -hmm. a lot of the sins so many sins that we attempted or sometimes we actually do fall into the the if they just have a strong desire for something and they need to learn to they can they can pray for god to help them i did that yeah, I did. I was on drugs and I kept thinking I had a demon of drugs or pharmacia mm -hmm. and I was, you know, praying my brains out. <laughs> I, mean, yeah. I had people praying for me and stuff, but I still had that problem. And I, I finally I prayed to God and I said, you know what, I, if you'll help me, I am going to do everything I can. And I'm going to just like you said, put my foot out. And I'm going to have faith and that you're going to do it, help me with it. And sure enough, I went and I turned myself into a detox place and I'm like, I'm going to do it. You know what? I come out of there. That was it. <laughs> I had no more drug addictions after that. Never again. And um, praise God for that. But he does help us if we, you know, if we help and ask him a to help us and everything he mm -hmm. will help us like it said what does it say if if what father if their son asks him for a fish will give him a rock yeah. but for something good and he knows our heart that we really want it and we're you know really having a struggle he's going to help us with that exactly. um, not saying that there's not a, a room for deliverance please don't get me wrong anybody out there that hears this mm -hmm. but i'm just saying there are times that 
it's really not. Sometimes the enemy does oppress from the outside. He'll he'll put and, the you know, know, he'll put the lie in your in your ear. And yes. if you we have free will to choose to listen to Satan or to God. And That's it's hard. Right. And, and there's that pull. And it just yeah. because, and then uh, another thing that uh, uh, my pastor, you know, in Brazil said, he, he said, well, he's in Brazil now, but he lived here in the United States for many years. But he said, when uh, the Bible also says, when the house is clean, you know, so when de a demon's cast out, let's say I went through all this, and I didn't feel it with the word of God. And I didn't, and, well, Jesus the Holy Christ Spirit. First. Yeah. Yes. And, and, and just search him and continually fight that, you know, temptation to go back into the worldly things and uh, which we, we are bombarded every single minute of the day second, you know, imagine the younger people, but God is yeah. bigger than all this. He is, Jesus Christ is bigger than all this. And we need That's to right. believe that. But if he, yeah. it, it says, you know, seven more spirits will come into the empty house. And so yes. we can't leave, we can't be, go and say, oh, I, I want deliverance, deliver me. And That's then right. you go back to doing whatever you want to do and I'm delivered. You're opening yourself up to demonic activity. Right. But it, <laughs> and it, it just brings me back to scripture again, because remember when he was walking past the blind man? And yes. he, Jesus knew everything, knows everything. He's God. Amen. And every single time that someone would come to him, Jesus helped me. And he would say, what do you need? He would ask, right? He yes. always asked, what, I want to see or I want to walk. I want to. And he healed these people. He cast out demons. But That's right. But he knows, but he wants us to ask because that shows faith. That's right. Yes. You know? And he even said that woman of woman of great faith or something. I can't remember the verse, but um, she was asking him to heal her daughter. And he's, oh, okay. But sir, I, I can't remember if she was uh, a Samaritan or. And, I think and, that's what it was. And he said, um, I, I can't remember what his answer was to her. And then she said. But Lord, even uh, the the puppies, you know, they they'll get the crumbs from the table, saying that she would, even though she wasn't worthy, and he that's to show her faith, you know. Same thing yes. with the woman in the well, the woman that touched his his cape when he was walking, he felt his power come. It's this. It takes faith. You have to reach out to him, and, and he's that's not right. doing that to test us. He loves us too much. To, to be to impose himself on us. Yes. Yeah. You know, he's a gentleman, but it's so beautiful. It's and I it just is. you know, and I, I just again it, it just every day, you know, you just think how merciful, how amen to to take amen. us out from that dirty mire. And I'm so glad that you did come out of that, Agoni. Oh my God. You know, because you're a dear friend and, and I know, mm -hmm. you know, I I just, I mean, that man, and I'm not, I know it wasn't the man, mm -hmm. it was Jesus, but that man was obedient. Yes, he and, was. you know, yeah. praise God for him and that what everything he did for you. He put up uh, with a lot of uh, humiliation. And <laughs> yeah, and did you say in your, I heard you say in your testimony before, that um, you, with even when you after you had blacked out, that you was being very rude to him, saying a lot of things, and uh -huh. um, you know, insulting him, and, and all this. But it was the oh, spirit that was doing it. It was light, and I was darkness. So that's you know, right. I just hated <laughs> any religion that was not, you know, yeah. my my faith. And I, I told my sister, he, oh, he, you know, he's gonna, oh, he wants his money, and keep him away from my yeah. dad. You did get delivered and you did get exactly. saved. And now you're you're being obedient and you're being a voice for the Lord. And I'm so happy about that. I really am. Mm -hmm. Thank everybody, you, everybody that hears this, y'all really need to get her book. I'm telling you, it's Thank a good you. book. It is. I mean, the way she wrote it, it's, it's incredible. It's incredible. You just have to go to it. I'm, I'm going to put down the link to Amazon for that book so people can, or to your website. Doesn't it have the link on your website to it? 
it does um uh you can get it on, on the website yes it, it will link to amazon or to uh, it's uh deeper Re uh, deeper revelation books okay uh, and also there are other places that you can get it you know i, I think um some of the christian bookstores uh online yeah. obviously everything is online but then i yeah. and i I thank God for you and for your ministry oh, thank you. and for your beautiful testimony, for your heart and how you love to reach thank out you. and, and your, your teaching is wonderful. And, and I pray oh, that God will continue using you with this podcast and have many, well, many Thank other you people. so much. I've been wanting to start the podcast. You know that since mm -hmm. I met you. Yes. 2018, I think it was. And I, yes. and, and I, um, I've wanted to do it, but you know, I've been through a lot since, since we met and I just knew that now is God's timing. And then I'm trying to be obedient and everything is going along. Okay. And, and, and I'm going to use it and let it be a vessel for the, for God and, and everything. Amen. So Amen, you know, Dana. it's all for his glory and, and everything, you know, our, most of our testimonies is all for his glory as well, as you know. Yeah. And I'm um, there. Is for you know people that listen to this, yes. even though it's not exactly what they're going through, but it, there are different people that you're gonna have on that's gonna oh this is what I'm going through or in your case with yes. ghost hunting, and yeah. you know in my case it's spiritism umbanda or but yes. like we talked about all this all these deceitful practices are demonic and and it Amen. needs we need to be set free from it. But I'm so thankful for you, Dana. And Thank I, you. I pray Thank you so much. Would you yeah. like to close with prayer? Yes. I would would you to. be so kind? I appreciate it. I really do. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father, for this you, this time together with my, my friend, Dana. Lord, I pray that you continue blessing her, bless her family, bless her children and grandchildren and bless this podcast father because you, i know that many people can will will hear exactly what you want them to hear father god thank you for the opportunity to be here with dana and thank you. i consider her my good friend she's in my prayers every time i pray she's in my prayers and it's been many years and uh, I just, you, I, I'm just thankful to God for, for her life and for all she does for the kingdom of God. And I pray for the listeners and I pray that God, that you use this for your glory, for your honor. And I thank you for your mercy, for your mercy. We, we yes, don't deserve it, but I thank you, Father God. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 And thank you so much, Ivani. And you know, thank I'm thankful you. for you. Thank you know, you. you've always been a very sweet, humble person, and I've, I've always heard a lot about you, and I hope everything goes okay, and God will continue to bless your ministry, mm -hmm. and Thank you me. have really built on your ministry, and I'm so proud of you with your book. I'm Thank so happy you. about that. I really am. I mean, to get the word out there about it, so that way other people can get your book. Thank you so um, much, Dana. Thank you. God bless, God bless you, my you. You, you have a good evening. Okay. Bye -bye. okay? Bye-bye. Thank you for listening to this episode from start to finish. If you have any questions about the things we covered in the show or would like to follow my projects, please find me on YouTube and Facebook. I'll answer all messages, so don't hesitate to reach out. See you next time.